Hey everybody, Terrible Dactyl here. I wanted to do a quick video today about a topic that I've noticed coming up uh, very often. It, this is like something that comes up, it seems like, every two weeks in online discussion forums and message boards and groups uh, focusing on dinosaur figures, but really just like animal figurines in general. Um, and I guess this even applies a little bit to other kinds of toys. I mean, this is pretty much probably ubiquitous. Um, it is a phenomenon that has a lot of people stumped, a lot of people you see online complaining about this when they first notice it, and I wanted to give you a little breakdown of this phenomenon that happens during the production run of a particular figure, a particular model number, which I've been lovingly calling Paint Application Crapification Syndrome. Now you can probably figure out the basics of what this is just from my little nickname for it there. But I want to show you a couple examples today and just talk about what this is, uh, why this happens, and how you can avoid this dreaded syndrome. Now, I'm going to be picking on a lot of um, safari figures today. I don't mean to do that. It's just that I happen to have a lot of, like, multiple versions, uh, especially a lot of these Carnegie figures. Um, I will show some examples from other lines, too. Um, it's just that the Safari and the Carnegie Collection in particular, some of those figures were in production for so long that it's really obvious some of the differences between the paint applications on these different figures. So I want to start by looking at these. This this is the Pachycephalosaurus, uh, which was originally released in 1990. And immediately when you look at these two different figures, first of all, you can notice that there's slightly variant um, uh, molds here. You, the mold warped or was adjusted or something a little bit later on in the production to make this version, which is like leaning over. It's a little lower. This is the original one here. And if we take a closer look, you can see that compared to the newer one, it has a more detailed, more colorful, more intricate paint application. Now, when I talk about the paint application, I'm talking about things like the number of colors, the number of layers and washes and uh, different what we might call paint operations or, or paint hits that went into making this. If you look at this one, each individual time a, a brush had to touch this figure at some point, counts as a paint operation or a paint hit. Besides tooling, making the actual molds, which is a massive, massive expense, the paint application is actually the most expensive part of producing a figure. It's also the most noticeable part. When you're looking at a figure, you're probably going to notice something about the color, the way that the paint is applied, before you even start to notice details of the sculpt. And a good paint application can actually bring out details of the sculpt uh, differently than a poor paint application or a rushed paint application. Obviously, paint applications, if they're rushed, if they're applied sloppily, can really take away from the entire presentation of the figure and, and kind of make or break the difference between a good figure and a bad figure, or one that we might not prefer, at least. Now, right away, you can notice that this one has a little bit more color. It's got more of this purplish um, wash along the side of it, which a wash is like a light paint application that was applied late in the process. But if you think of every color on here, these are all hand painted, like almost all toys, action figures, and things like that. People have this idea that they're painted by machine. In fact, most of them, even if it's not called out on the packaging, like, oh, this was hand painted, blah, blah, blah. Somebody in a factory, likely in China, had to sit there and individually paint each and every one of these figures. So looking at the Pachycephalosaurus as an example, what what went into that? Well, first you've got to lay down a base color. So you're going to either spray paint or use a brush to paint, you know, probably this bluish gray color here as the base all along it. And then this yellowish color as the base color of the actual base. Then you've got to let that dry. You're going to set that aside. You're going to do more. You're going to let them dry. You're going to come back to it. Now we're going to put on the next coat of paint, which might be some of the bigger details, like the black stripes here, um, some of the little paint hits here on the claws, on the hands and feet. Maybe these white spots here, although that looks like it's applied on top of the wash. So that would be an even later step. Some of these take longer than others, especially if they're small, intricate details. 
more paint applications, more paint operations equals a higher cost to the manufacturer, which has to be passed on to the consumer in some way. Well, what way does that happen? What I have noticed with animal figures and dinosaur figures is that usually what companies will do, like Safari, but also pretty much every company out there from, you know, some something that's making cheaper toy type things all the way up to high quality figures like, uh, you know, Papa or PNSO, um, what they'll do is they'll save their best paint operations for the latest figures. Like I said, by various lines of evidence, I can tell that this version of Pachycephalosaurus was probably from either the first production run or close to the first production run. It's got a very intricate paint job. It's got a little bit more color to it than the newer one. You can see it's got this addition of a brown wash on the base, which this one lacks. This one's painted a lot more sloppily around the feet than this one is. This was a little bit probably of a rush job. Why is that? Well, by the time this one was physically made, and you can tell by looking at the bottom of the figure here in other ways, uh, watch my other videos if you want to figure out how to date your dinosaur figures. Anyway, this one came out more towards the mid 90s. I'm going to say probably 93 or 94 several years after it was new. Now, there were other new figures being added to the line during that time. Those became the priority. A company always wants to put its best foot forward. Its new newest releases need to look really nice so that you see it on the shelf. You're like, oh, I, I really want to buy this. Or they're taking photos of them for new catalogs and things like that. They need to look really, really good. So they're going to focus their effort, additional paint operations, um, additional time to produce the figure on those first run models. If that figure stays in production for years and years and years, they are going to cut things from the paint operation. They're going to cut colors. They're going to cut time, tell the people, the factory, look, just slop that yellow on there. Don't worry if it looks good or not. This is an old figure at this point. Collectors have got it. You know, we're done taking photos of it. We're done showcasing this at trade shows and things like that. Who cares? Right? So the paint applications come out, I mean, worse. I, I, personally, I, I think this objectively looks worse than the original one. And there are some more obvious examples of this. Another such example are these two Stegosauruses. This is the color vinyl, multicolor era Stegosaurus. Once again, Safari Carnegie Collection. This is the original one. This one's actually pretty rare. Um, but if you look in catalogs, if you look in collector's guides from the 90s when they were photographing their models, this is the version that was used. You can see it's got a lot of additional paint operations specifically on the plates. It's got multiple layers of color here. It's got a white base. It's got a couple of different layers of brown. And then those really thin little brown, just like a little tiny brush stroke for each individual line. After the first year or so of being in production, this version, which is more colorful, it's got a little bit more of this orangey, a little more of the whitish cream color, um, was replaced by a slightly duller version with less paint operations. You can see where they really save time and paint is on the plates. Instead of all these different layers of color on the plate, you've basically just got the base color, which is this orangey beige couple of those lines not nearly as fine pointed and detailed as the little lines on the plates here which have a much more hand painted look this is like somebody just took a paintbrush and went wah, 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 wah. all right next one wah, 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 wah. all right and then just like a very little bit of a messy brown wash on top of the plates which is the same brown wash over the whole rest of the figure just kind of like glopped on there same thing on the spikes and that probably saved quite a lot of time in the factory to produce the figure. I mean, just the drying time alone for the additional paint on all these plates, this is like three layers of paint. You've got to paint the white, let it dry, come back to it. Paint the light brown, let it dry, come back to it. Paint the dark brown and probably the little lines at that time, let it dry, now it's done. So you're possibly saving hours of production time from just simply dropping the paint from the plates and switching to this version. One more relatively subtle example here, once again from the Carnegie Collection, is the reduction in the overall amount of paint. 
This is the 2007 repaint version of the Carnegie Triceratops, but these are two quite different looking examples of the same model. This is the original, and you can see it's got um, a lot of paint on it. The um, substrate color underneath this is uh, it's got sort of like almost a black um, vinyl color under this. You can kind of see it showing through here. It's got this golden brown painted on top of it all over the whole body, fully painted head to toe. There is no plastic showing through anywhere on this figure. Uh, in fact, all of the original Carnegie figures from the late 80s through the early 90s were painted in this style until they switched to color vinyl, which saved an entire layer base coat of paint because now the base color could be made in colorful plastic instead of being painted on. But I guess for 2007, they wanted to go all out and go back to a fully painted look for some of these figures. But you can see it's just blended very subtly compared to this one, which once again, it has a color vinyl. This is the base color. It is not paint. It's just bare plastic. You've got a little bit of a brown wash airbrushed on top of here. It, they did not use a paintbrush for this. They just simply tss, sprayed it, just took a little airbrush or a spray can type of thing and went tss, right across the back, three seconds, quick to dry, and then a little bit extra tss, 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 around here. And then you've got probably some hand brushed details here with this beige on the epioccipitals and you know the eye, the horns, and things like that. So other than saving the details for the face, they really kind of skimped out on the body work for this one. Um, once again, probably reducing the time to produce this version by at least an hour, maybe more, compared to this version, which is totally covered in paint, a lot more drying time, a lot more probably hand uh, brush based paint application, which means more paint operations, which means it's going to be more expensive to produce. This one is cheaper to produce. As a collector, personally, I like the more intricate and detailed ones. Right? So what can we do about this? Well, definitely the number one thing to do is first realize that this is not unique to Safari. This is not unique to the Carnegie collection. Every single company does this. After the first year of production, they're going to reduce paint operations in some way. If the figure has been in production for a long time, if you wait to buy that figure three, four, five years, it's going to look like a completely different figure, possibly even more extreme than this. I do not have the newer version of the uh, American Museum of Natural History tube die long, which is one of my favorite little tube figures, very rubbery. Now compare this to some more recent samples from the same tube. If you go and buy this online, often you're going to see the original version shown in photos. If you go to order that figure, now, over a decade and a half after this originally came out, this figure is still being sold on the market today. Some of the figures from this tube, as you can see, have almost no paint operations at all. They have like removed the paint entirely, and they're just selling you basically an unpainted figure, like the old Authentics Erasers or old Invictas or something like that. Um, and it's not as nice looking. I mean... It's still a great figure. It's still a great sculpt. Maybe you can paint it yourself. Maybe that's easier for customizers, but they have dropped a lot of the color, a lot of the paint applications from this. Uh, some companies do this intentionally and they will sell them at the same time just to give you a cheaper option. A recent example of this came up with the Vitae dinosaurs. Vitae has some figures out there like the uh, Ginyu Pelta, and like the older figures, uh, the Giganotosaurus and the Wuhurasaurus, you know, they are well known to have uh, versions that were assumed at, at one point to actually be bootlegs of the real ones. And in terms of Vitae, I mean, that may or may not be true for some of those older ones. But right now, Vitae is marketing uh, versions of their figures for less money with less paint application. It's like instant paint application crapification syndrome. Now, obviously, that's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek name. You know, does it make the figure crappier or worse to have reduced paint applications? Per, in my opinion, I think yes. Um, I think you definitely want to try and get 
the first year of issue, first run figure, if you want to have the nicest paint application. Uh, people have pointed this out with things like the Papo uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, the one that looks like it's inspired by uh, Jurassic Park, where in the catalog, the photos look really nice, all the paint looks really blended and detailed, and then you buy it and it looks like it's wearing a pair of socks because they just globbed the paint on the foot, set it aside to dry, and then put it in a bag to sell it uh, at a store or online. And people are like, what the heck? This is almost like false advertising. Well, I'm, it kind of is. I'm, these companies aren't really updating their stock photos very often. The original paint applications, in many cases, even prototypes, which are always going to be more detailed than whatever the factory is going to be churning out, um, even compared to the nicer paint applications, the prototype photos always look better compared to the compare the prototype of this triceratops with the actual model and you can see it's almost no comparison that one was probably hand painted by Forrest Rogers the highly trained technical artist who sculpted the figure and from interviews with her that I've read it seems like she's mostly also responsible for coming up with the paint schemes and physically hand painting those models shipping them off to safari safari then ships a copy off to the factory in china for those artists at that factory to then copy it again so things are going to be lost in translation you're going to have to simplify it a little bit between the prototype stage and the actual production run stage but anyway i hope this sheds a little bit of light on why sometimes the figures that we get in the mail when we order a figure online or the figures that we see in the store when we go to shop for one compared to the photos we may have seen a company publish ahead of time may not be quite what we expected and like i said the bottom line if you want the closest to you know best possible figure of any particular model you're honestly you're gonna want to try and get that figure the first year it comes out because a year later let alone two or three years later. It's just not going to be as good. Anyway, this has been Terrible Dactyl. Thank you for joining me on Jurassic Plastic, and I'll see you next time, everybody.